Thank you for taking the time to watch this tubeless installation video. Please remember it's only a supplement to the written instructions. You still have to follow every step exactly or you could damage the system causing problems later on. There's obviously several ways to install a traditional tube, but there's only one correct way to install a tubeless. Please take your time and follow each step. Remember, if it's taking too much effort, you're going to do something wrong and damage it. It's very important that the rim lock and bladder stem are four spokes apart. If you have an existing hole, you can start there and go four spokes either way to drill a new 7 16 or an 11 millimeter hole. And if you already have a hole at four spokes, then just enlarge it. Take some sandpaper to remove any sharp edges from all of the spoke heads and also around the holes. You'll probably want to clean the center of the rim so the tape will stick. Plug any of the unused holes with the supplied plug and apply one full wrap of tape. Do not stretch it. Pull it off the roll, let it relax for a few seconds, and press it onto the center of the room. Use a small knife to remove the tape over the usable holes. Spray the entire system inside and out with a silicone based tire dressing. Armor All works great. Completely remove the bladder from the red liner and then remove its valve core. Align the rimlock bolt with the large hole in the rim and center the red liner on the lip of the rim. Align the bladder valve stem with the smaller hole and carefully insert the bladder back into the liner. Just double check to make sure both are lined up with their respective holes. You can adjust if you need to. Insert the rim lock into its hole and tighten the nut until it's snug. You'll want to insert the bladder stem and put the small neural nut on only halfway. Do not tighten it against the rim. Work the liner on beginning at the rim lock and going past the bladder stem until you run out of slack. Reach across both beads with the spoon and gently work the liner onto the rim. You'll want to be pinching the liner opposite of where you're prying the spoon to keep the liner in drop dead center. You'll want to finish at the rim lock. If the liner is taking too much effort, then it's not in the drop dead center of the rim. Stand the tire upright on the ground and go ahead and hang the guide plate on the back beat of the tire. With the rim lock at the bottom, insert the rim into the tire. Pry one side at a time until it's all the way in. Make sure to keep constant downforce on the rim until it's completely inside of the tire or it'll want to jump right out. Start opposite the rim lock and push the tire's bead fully into the drop dead center of the rim. The more of the bead you can force into the drop dead center, the easier it'll go on. You'll want to begin spooning the tire on going side to side so your last bites will end next to the rim lock. Flip the wheel over and repeat the same process, finishing next to the rim lock. A 
For this step, if you plan on using a tire sealant, then do not use soapy water. Instead, follow the special sealant instructions on the back side of the written instructions. So let's start next to the rim lock. Pry the tire down with a spoon while pouring soapy water past the bead into the center of the rim. Too much soapy water is way better than not enough. Repeat this process every four spokes around the entire wheel on both sides. This is a critical step to ensure a good seal, so take your time. Saturating that red liner with soapy water after the tire has been mounted is a key to an airtight seal. Repeat the soapy water process one more time. Now bounce the wheel on the ground while rotating it, making sure the soapy water completely covers the outside of the red liner. Go ahead and reinsert both valve cores. Inflate the bladder to 110 psi and the tire to a desired air pressure. Install the valve caps and tighten the small neural nut on the bladder's stem against the red cap. Do not tighten it against the rim. Tighten the rim lock to 11 foot-pounds, 15 newton meters, or until it's firmly engaged with the inside of the tire. If you have any issues with sealing, please follow the detailed troubleshooting instructions. They're on the back side of the written instructions. Remove both valve cores and nuts. Start next to the rim lock and begin spooning the tire off the rim. Be very careful not to grab the red liner with the spoons. Here's a little trick to help you with this. With your tire spoon, reach inside the tire next to the rim lock. Give it a small tug while watching the rim lock stem. When you grab the liner, it creates a linkage to the rim lock and the bolt will sink. When you only have the tire, it moves much less and you're okay to keep going. Flip the wheel over and repeat the process so both beads are off the rim. Pull on the rim while pushing down on the tire and it should come right out. Start your spoon about four or five spokes away from the rim lock in the opposite direction of the bladder stem. Now carefully reach under both beads, remembering to be pinching the red liner into the drop center opposite from where you're prying with the spoon. This creates more slack, making it so much easier to remove. <laughs> 